All right, so this time we're actually going to, we're not just going to create um, some classes that uh, utilize the console. We'll actually create a parent class that is an object that pops up in a graphical interface, and then um, we'll create some children classes from that uh, parent class and actually go down to the grandchildren um, to try and demonstrate these concepts in a little bit more concrete way. So you will download the program or the zip file from our try to folder uh, intro to inheritance called inheritance 2 and it should pop up a program like uh, have a contain a program like this that has two classes uh, the main class which has been written for you and then the demo panel class which has also been written for you and this is just a shell uh, of a program that doesn't do anything yet so if you run it all that pops up is a window Midterm, oh, it shouldn't say midterm. Oh, and then that stuff pops up. Okay, so let's change it so it doesn't say midterm first off, because uh, this is not midterm, and I should have changed that. Intro to inheritance. Uh, and then um, we're going to head, uh, well, let's look at what it does again. So it should pop up, and it'll give some instructions. Eventually, you're going to have to have some entities on the screen, and the arrow keys will move, and the space uh, bar will do something sometimes, and you can click on an entity to select it. So um, that's what we're going to get to, but first off, we have to create these things. And so uh, in the past, we used um, just a, a parent class. Uh, this time, we're actually going to use an abstract class. So we create a new class. And an abstract, you can check the abstract box or not, it doesn't matter. Uh, the abstract uh, class, we're going to call this a dead parent class, just to remind ourselves that uh, we it's abstract. So an abstract class, all this means is that you never intend to create an actual instance of this class. It's just a class that contains basic behaviors and fields uh, that other classes will, will create from. So... Um, that's really the only difference. The only difference is that uh, you cannot create an instance of the, this class. And the other thing is that it has to have one abstract method to be able to be called an abstract class. So we can add some um, fields, but we want the children classes to be able to use these. And so the private keyword means that only the dead parent class has access to it, which doesn't make a lot of sense. But the protected keyword says that only children classes, classes that extend or inherit from this class, have access to it, uh, not the public in general. So we'll use protected. So protected, we're going to have a bunch of doubles because we need to keep track of things for this class. This is going to be an object on the screen. So it needs to have an x position, a y position, um, dx, we're going to have dy, and uh, speed at which it moves. All right, we also have to have some booleans to keep track of motion, so I'm going to show you this. Protected boolean, uh, left, right, up, and down. Um, and we're going to have some integers to keep track of the width. Protected int width oops, and height. And we're going to have a protected color to keep track of its color. And, oops, um, we can import the color library, obviously. So in this video, we're just setting up the parent class, or the dead parent class. Um, and that's just my word. That's not like a common word. Um, we're also going to have, uh, I don't know, do we need uh, lines with, no, I don't think so. Okay, so I don't think we need to have any sort of rectangle for collisions. We're not going to deal with collisions right now. So we're going to have a basic constructor public dead parent class and this constructor if somebody wants to use it they can it'll just set up some default values let's just set x to 200 y equals 200 let's have the width of a def default width of whatever you want 40 and this is an object that's going to be a visual thing on the screen so you can just well whatever so you can see it's different um, speed, I have this in, uh, initially set to 8, and color equals color dot white. So you can have a um, constructor for an abstract class uh, 
that might be useful. So we're gonna set up, we're gonna have some basic behavior. So we want this thing to be able to set its position. So we're gonna have, you know, like in the past with these demo panels, we have our three basic basic methods that the uh, demo loop goes through. It says while running, don't ignore the timer things. I was just uh, kind of adding a more sophisticated timer. So it does three things. It updates, it creates the image in memory, and it repaints itself. So we need to update and um, draw, we're gonna use for this create image in memory. Um, method. So this is where, like the draw, and we pass over the graphics G uh, object that's already been created for you, right? So this is just that shell, basically the brick breaker shell that you can use to kind of play with other objects. So we're gonna head over to dead parent class, and we also need to create an update method. Uh, and this can be a uh, public method. So an abstract class can have public methods. Public, um, it doesn't really need to, I guess. It can be a protected method, but um, so. No, it should be public. Public uh, update, public void update. And here, all we're gonna do is call a different method called set position. I just like to keep it um, nice and clean. We haven't created that yet. Um, so let's create set position, uh, void set position. And we're creating these things here because we want any object uh, that inherits from the dead parent class that is on the screen. Uh, to have these same behaviors. And so we're going to say um, if left is true, which keeps track of our motion, we want to increment x or decrement x by speed. So x minus equals speed. And then I'll just copy and paste this. I don't know. Uh, if uh, right, then we want to say x plus equals speed. It's going to the right. If left or if up we're going to say y minus equals speed and if down y plus equals speed all right and then um, we're going to take care of the basic wall collision so that our objects can't go off the screen anything that inherits from this class has to stay on the screen if X is less than zero, so it hit the um, left-hand wall. We want to just set X to zero, and we want to say left equals false. We don't. We no longer want it to be moving left. If Y or yeah, uh, well let's just do X. If X is uh, greater than inheritance main dot width. Minus the uh, minus the width of the object. Then we want to say x equals inheritance main dot width, and we also want to say right equals false. And this system is going to become clear what I'm doing as you see it unfold. If y is less than zero, y equals zero and up equals false. If y is greater than inheritance main dot height um, minus height minus 22 and 22 is the width on a Mac of this bar up here uh, which I finally figured out kind of places it in the correct spot so um, I'm sure there are other ways to do that but that's one way so y equals inheritance uh, this whole thing so if it hits the bottom of the um, window set down to false and submit, stop it from going any further and that's it for our um, uh, motion. Okay. Um, I'll pause and we're going to keep working and expanding this dead parent class, uh, right now after in the next video.